Hello and welcome to the episode 300 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. During the episode, we'll investigate on the Beatles' first radio interview, on more work on Beatles for Sale, and on Ringo starting to record his first solo album. On the 27th of October 1960, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed at the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany, for the 24th straight night. 1961, the Beatles, still with Pete Best on drums, played the Village Hall in Naughty Ash, for another show put together by Pete's mother, Mona. One year later, in 1962, the Beatles, now in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, returned for the fourth and last time to the Holm Hall in Birkenhead. The real memorable event, though, is that before going on stage, they recorded an interview for Radio Clutterbridge, their first ever radio interview. The material was to be broadcast by the closed-circuit radio of the local Cleaver and Clutterbridge hospitals. The interviewers were Monty Lister, Malcolm Threadgill and Peter Smethurst. The Fabs talked about their work, with John talking about Please Please Me and hoping for the song to be released as a single, and Paul naming John as the band's leader. One year later, in 1963, the Beatles performed three times in a day, at 3, 5 and 8 pm, at the Circus Club in Gothenburg, Sweden. For the occasion, the band was supported by Trio Me Bomba, a local act, and Ken Levy and the Phantoms, another British band. On the 27th of October 1964, the Beatles were in London at the EMI Studios. The task of the day was completing some edits and produce stereo and mono mixdowns of What You're Doing, Honey Don't, Mr. Moonlight, Every Little Thing, and eight days a week. Everything was achieved in a straightforward and efficient fashion between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. In 1967, as you can imagine, the editing for the Magical Mystery Tour film went on at Norman's Film Productions. And as you can imagine, I am about to ask you to support this podcast and my other music content creations by doing one of the things listed on www.simonmas.com support. On that page, you can also find out how to acquire the deluxe version of the podcast, available on NFTs. That means that you can get the files and then resell the NFT further down the line. Let's close the episode with another session, happened on this date in 1969. Today, Ringo Starr started to record his first solo album, Sentimental Journey, beginning the production with two sessions at the EMI Studios. Produced by George Martin, the album featured a number of old jazz standards, arranged by various artists, including Paul McCartney, Quincy Jones and Elmer Bernstein. The first session of the day, taking place between 2.30 and 5 p.m., so a 17-piece orchestra recording Night and Day, arranged by Chico O'Farrell. During the second session, running from 7 to 10.45 pm, Ringo overdubbed his vocal part. The song was mixed in stereo between 9.30 and 10.45 pm. This concludes our episode today. Tomorrow, we'll see Brian Epstein taking notice of the Beatles for the first time. But there will be more, as usual. See you tomorrow. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.